Hello everybody, this is Jack Laser. I'm out here with Gunner and he's a, another new horse and I just wanted to go through uh, and show you some of the first steps of starting a horse. I've got a new series coming out here soon and I just kind of wanted to go through. We've already gone through a couple other horses and I just wanted to show you another horse. Um, Gunner here, he's a two and a half year old uh, Frisian Dutch Warm Blood Cross. I've worked with him when he was a uh, six month old, just getting him to trailer load and a few few things like that. And so he's never had a saddle. He's never had anything done with him. You know, of course, he's only two and a half. So other than you know, he knows how to lead and trailer load and that sort of thing. So what I wanted to go through here this evening is just kind of show you how do you take a young horse like this and start to bring him along because uh, he's going to be going to a show here coming up in about a month or so and um, that's why he's here to get him prepared for that he's actually for sale so if anybody out there is interested in him you can get a hold of me and I'll get you in contact with the owner but um, anyways he's he just showed up yesterday evening, and so what I like to do with, with these youngsters is just let them out here. He's been out in this pen all day, so I'm just letting them loose in the arena, moving around, getting used to all of that, and I'm going to go play with him, you know, see if I can get him to want to be with me and start from there. So come along. And he's down at the other end. So what I'm going to do is, can I get his mind to think back to me? And every time he thinks about me, I'm going to stop or back away from him. And every time he doesn't think about me, I'm going to either walk to him or get my stick and string going. So as soon as his mind checks out, I walk to him, and when I say walk to him, usually it's to the hind end. And there he started coming to me, and then he left. So then I'm going to start going back towards the hind end, throwing a little life and energy there. As soon as I get his mind, I back off. I back away from him. And, and it's kind of like I'm inviting him to come to me. If he doesn't, if he quits taking the invitation, then I'm going to go towards the hind end and say, hey, I'm talking to the hind end. I first want to get his mind, then his body, then, or, then his feet, then his body. So I get his mind, and his mind's following me pretty nicely. Now can I get his feet to move? Well, they're moving, and, but his, I lost his mind. So I want that mind, then ideally could I have gotten the hind feet to turn, move away from me and keep his front end coming to me, but he just decided to walk off, so I just throw a little life, a little energy, there he thought about me, so I back away. And then he leaves me again, so I go towards him. So this isn't about just running him around, though if he chose to do that, I would move with him, but it's more about can I get his mind to connect with me. So I step up when he's not thinking about me, and I back away when he does think back to me. So they are looking for his mind, his mind came, so I back away. And now his mind leaves, so I'm going to say, hey, come back to me, come back to me. There was the mind, and it actually got the feet to follow. So again, his mind, and then his body, which is head and neck, and then his feet. So 
I step in when he's ignoring, and then I can keep going until I get his mind to come to me. Even if that means reach out and touch him just slightly. And then I back away saying, will you come to me? Will you take my invitation? He did for a moment, and then he's like, oh, I'm a, I need to move. And the more he wants to leave me, the more pressure I'll put on. Ah. And there he's connecting back to me, so I just walk backwards and see if I can draw him all the way up to me. And he's been out here for about 10 minutes moving around and stuff. So I don't, a lot of times I don't even go into this until they've ran around and, you know, done what they need to do and then they start getting interested in other things other than just running. So that's a good place to start with these guys. If you have a horse that doesn't even want to be with you, you're, you have a lot more work ahead of you. But if I can get him to want to be with me, then it's going to make my life a lot easier when I start asking things of him. And he's like, no, but I don't really want to leave my buddy. So I add a little rhythm back behind. I put a little feel on the halter here, saying, can you step up with me? And at the end there, he was doing nice, but he didn't want to go, so then I add some rhythm back here. And what we're going to do is go through the three communication games with him. I know we've kind of covered that with in the, a little bit in the other videos, but I just want to go through that again because I haven't done anything with him. So I'm going to just first start off with the stick and string. Can I walk away from him with the stick and string in a rhythm? And just see what he thinks of that. Because, you know, I don't really know where this horse is at. I don't know how much he knows, how much he doesn't know. And there he gets a little stuck, so I'm just holding, and he came off of it. Now, if he wouldn't have, then I would just step off to the side and say, hey, would you like to come? So I don't make a big deal out of it. Good. stuck again. So I'm just walking, saying, can you come with me? Can you follow that feel? And that's pretty good. Now can I turn around, offer the end of the stick to him, and then come in and rub him with it. So instead of it being my hand, I'm using the stick. And he's such a good natured boy, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. Do one side, then the other side. And now I'm going to say, can you be okay with the stick and string? And he's kind of like, oh, I need to move my feet a little bit. But he's, he's starting to get into my space. So I throw a little rhythm at him saying, don't run into me. You have to stay out there. And again, see, he's running into my bubble. So I, I have to protect my bubble. I have to do whatever I need to to say you cannot enter into that. If you need to move your feet out there, that's okay. I don't mind that. But you can't run me over because... What he's used of is when he was a little baby, when he would get afraid, he could crawl up right next to Mama, and Mama would protect him. Well, I'm not as big as Mama, 
So I'm saying you have to get confident enough out there. I will protect you, but you can't run me over. You can't run into my space. There, and he didn't come into my space. So now what I'm going to do is just keep the rhythm going until he relaxes. There, he'll relax, so I quit. And then I'm going to start up again. Everything's a progression. As soon as the horse gets something, then you can move on. If they don't have it, though, then you have to repeat. And there again, he's kind of coming into my space, so I'm protecting that. Because if I don't protect it now, he will keep pushing into it. And eventually, we're going to get into trouble. This is nice. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go through the second of the three communication games. And that is steady pressure. Can I essentially put a feel anywhere on his body and get him to move off of that feel. So like if I want him to put his head down, can I put a feel up between his ears here saying move down? And I'm doing that through being as soft and light and polite as possible, but then I slowly get firmer and firmer and make it annoying until he wants to move. And he might move into me, he might go side to side, whatever, but I keep keep the feel there until he goes in the right direction. As soon as he does, I release. And then I can set up and do it again. So I'm putting a, making it uncomfortable. There he went down slightly, so I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. And then I can do it again. Ah, oh, thank you. Now, that's, that's one way, another, um, thing we want to be able to do is can we get the hind feet to step around the front feet. We're just going to do that by stepping off to the rib cage back here. Come in with this hand on the rib cage a little bit behind where my leg would be hanging. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Just start off with a soft feel and then slowly increase that feel into an annoyance. More and more I make sure I have a feel on my lead rope hand so he can't turn into me and kick me and then I just wait here so I'm digging into his side quite a bit and there he softened with his face so I softened a little bit because he he actually softened in his face and moved his rib cage a little so I still holding though there was a step back there it is the moment that he moves is I release, I don't go with them. That's the key with steady pressure, is you don't want to keep pushing right there. Because it took me, you know, 30 seconds or whatever to get that one step. So again, I start in soft, then I get more, and there it is. And I release. And then I'm gonna ask again. Because he knows nothing of all of this yet. There. So I'm communicating, saying, hey, can you start moving your feet? Because I'm putting a feel on your rib cage. And he's like, mm, I don't know. He's kind of falling asleep here a little bit. He steps back. There I release because he stepped in the direction I was wanting. I want the hind foot closest to me to cross over in front of the outside hind. That's the ideal. So again, picking up that feel, getting firmer, firmer, firmer. Now waiting on him, now he's getting annoyed. He's trying to scratch my finger, saying, hey, that's an annoying fly pressing into my rib cage. There it is, and I release. So I set it up and do it again. Yeah, that was really soft. So I'm going to leave him with that. Now I'm going to ask to move that front end around, <clears throat> doing it by coming in with one hand just below the, 
the ear here in front of the halter, the other hand on the shoulder. Get my horse to tip its nose and then say, can you step that over? Yeah, and do that again. It's not about pushing him around. It's about making it uncomfortable so your horse wants to move off of that pressure. So he's following. It's, you first get that head to bend, and then you get the shoulder to go. Yeah, not too bad. So you're getting the idea of that. There's, there's lots of ways you can use steady pressure. You want to be able to get your horse to, to step back with it. There's a tiny bit. There. And there. If I put a feel on the lead rope, that's a steady pressure up on his pole. See how he's just hanging on me there. As soon as he goes, I open. I reward him. Now the third communication game is, is rhythmic pressure. And that's about, can I give an intent? Can I put, throw out an intent at him and him follow that feel? And I'm kind of going through this fairly quickly here in the course. We go into it a lot more in depth. We have two, two different horses you get to see me work on doing this, and then it's a progression. We take you through the horse that hasn't been handled, or it's been handled, it hasn't been started before. One horse, the other horse had been started, but it was three or four years before, you know, the last time it had been ridden. So it's taking those horses and bringing them along at the speed that they could handle. This guy here is the youngest one that, that you'll see in this video course, you know, in these introductory videos. And so you really get to see how, you know, these youngsters, he's, he's still essentially a baby. So mentally it's taking him a little longer to kind of process this stuff. You a lot of times can't push him nearly as much. So the third thing here now is that throwing an intent, can I get my horse to move from that intent? And I'm doing that by stepping off to the side. Essentially I want that hind to step around just like the front. So I get a picture in my mind of what it is I want. Then I present the energy in my body to back up the picture. Then my tool shows up. Then my tool shows up until I get a response. So I want that hind to move over, keeping the front pretty much in one spot. I focus on that hind saying, let's go. So I've got the picture, then the energy. Now the tool shows up, and that's all it needed. I didn't need to go bigger with the tool. So let's do it again. I get my picture, throw my energy, my tool, there. And that's nice. Now let's see, can we go to this side? So I still have the, my picture, my energy, my tool comes in, and we get a response, and then I soften. So the moment he goes, is I soften, and that's his reward. That's moving the hind end, moving the front end. I'm going to pick up the lead rope. The hand that's closest to the shoulder is going to hold the lead rope going to the horse's nose. I hold the other part of the lead, the tail of the lead rope, in the other hand, kind of creating a V here. Now I can use the belly of the rope between my two hands as my driving aid. So my picture is I want the front feet to step around, keeping the hind feet pretty much still. So my picture, then my life comes up, then my tool starts going, and then I use my tool till I get a response. And then I soften. So he stepped over. Then I again, life up. 
if he were to go forward, I've got the lead rope there and I can say, no, no, don't go forward. Or I can get more in front of him. I can get up here and ask him to step around. Because I'm just getting some control of the horse's feet. It's all just basic stuff, but the basis, it's the basis for everything you do. And that's why it's so important. And there he's backing up, so it's not quite it. There it is. And then I soften, and he wanted to leave lead by going forward, so I pick up my lead rope. Bring my life up again. See, and this is usually the hardest part of this, is moving the front end around, because you have more weight on the front than the hind. And shoulders what they used to push into other horses with and that's what he was pushing into me earlier so I'm starting to get control of that shoulder and that was nice and then I can say okay now can you move that hind thank you now I might say can you bring the front through don't step on me and step the shoulder over there and that's good now I can use some rhythmic to say can you step forward so those three things rhythmic motion steady pressure rhythmic pressure are the three things anybody uses anybody who works with horses uses these three things to get the things done that they're doing with their horse so that's kind of a crash course on the three communication games. What did I want to do now? You know, that's just kind of getting some language, language established with him. And so the next thing is, is doing some accepting the human. Which accepting the human and then accepting the saddle is pretty much rhythmic motion type of work. It's getting him to be able to handle stuff going all over him. My body is going to be what, you know, it's accepting humans about. I'm going to do it from this pedestal here because I've shown you how to do it from, from the ground in the video course. You get to see me showing you how to do it from a fence. So I'm giving you a few different options because most Riders are women, and for them to do accepting the human from the ground is going to be really hard. So here's another way of doing that. All right, so I've got this pedestal out here. You can use a mounting block, or, or uh, if you use a mounting block, make sure it's a secure one, because some of them aren't real secure, and they kind of get wobbly, or... If you've got a real tight bale, you can use a bale. That works too. Um, so what I'm going to do is just start asking him to step forward. And I'm going to be using my three communications games to do this. So I'm putting a feel on the lead rope. And then I'm backing that feel up with some rhythm to say, can you step up? As soon as he steps up, I'm like, ah, thank you. And let him have that. Now I'm going to shorten my lead up just a little bit more. And this is a nice round tub, so I can just go around and around. So again, I'm going to put a feel. And see how he just came right up to me. Almost makes it like we've done this before. And then get to where I can just reach up, rub on them. And 
and then I'm going to start just taking my belly and can I just kind of lay up on him while I'm rubbing him with my hand. But in that whole process is I want you to have a feel on his face with this, with the other lead, with the lead rope hand and grab a hold of the mane with it. So that's our anchor hand. That's going to keep us safe and keep a feel on him. So if he goes to moving, we're going to know we're going to feel that there first. So again, I'm going to go to just kind of laying on him. And then can I take my body and just slide it back and forth? And he's just making out like this is no big deal. And then see he's handling it very nice, so then I'm gonna just start going up and down. Can I rub him with my belly up and down and start going up back and forth on his body? And there he's a little bit too far back. So I'm going to ask him to step one step forward. And by doing it from the mounting block here, is you're teaching him from day one how to mount from the mounting block. Yeah, see that's nice because he's right right there in line with me. Good. Now you're going to get a lot of horses that might be bothered with it and they need to move their feet. So if they need to move their feet, allow them to move and then bring them back. Or, you know, when you go start going up and down like this and your horse goes to move, you might just keep hopping up and down you know, like that, see how he's a little bothered. So I might just do that until my horse stops. Then when he stops, then we'll walk him back over to the mounting block. Ask him to step up here. That's pretty good. See it. I'm on the off side right now, but you want to get to where you can do this from both sides. Yeah, I can hop a little up and down on the box, and he got a little bothered, so I just go off, hop up and down, and now I'm going to set him up the other direction. And forward. That's nice. I want him to be soft in my hand, though. He's kind of leaning on me. And there he swung the hind end out, so I'm just going to ask him to step forward again. All of this work that I'm doing. You know, and all of the, the stuff that I show in the course is designed for you to take as much time as you need to get it to happen. So if it takes you a few days to just get the communication games down, well, that's fine. It might take you a week of playing with this from the mounting block to get your horse just standing here and you're standing beside him. That is fine. You know, just every horse goes at a different rate or a different speed, and you move them along at their speed, your speed. The more horses you start, the more understanding you get, then, you know, it gets easier and it usually moves along a little quicker. But don't be bothered if it's you feel like it's taking you a while. 
So I'm hopping up and down, going back and forth. I can hop a little bit more. Now I've got my anchor hand here. The other hand, I'm placing it on his back. I'm taking set my stick down. And now I'm going to just hop up and lay on him. But I'm laying on right on the wither. I'm not laying back here on the sensitive part of his back. So I'm going to go up, lay on him. And there he's like, I'm not sure what to do with that weight. It's there. And he needed to drift around a little bit, so that's fine. I stayed up there until his feet stopped. Because he was just kind of drifting. But if he went into escape or he got bothered, he's like, oh my gosh, and took off, all I would do is slide off. And then we set it up and do it again. But by him just kind of like, oh, I'm not sure, I just stayed there until he stopped, and then I rewarded him by coming off. And so I'm going to set him up and do that from this side. him to step forward and come right around and that's pretty nice. Get my anchor hand up and down, rubbing on them. See right there he's like, oh I need to leave. So I just slide off, and then I went into just disengaging that hind end. So he doesn't get in the idea of he can just run off. Okay, one more step. Good boy. on them. Just kind of swinging back and forth. Hey. Yeah, that's nice. So I'm laying across them, but I keep my feet together. And then I slide down. And that was nice. He kept his feet still that whole time. And on this side he kind of has to get used to my weight up here find the balance Trying, trying hard here. He's just getting a little too much on top of me. Little step forward. There you go. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop straight up. Like so. And come back down. up and over, and all I have to do is roll over. Got him bent. Just waiting on him. It's 
So again, th this might be three, four, five days of doing this till you get to this point. There. As soon as he stands still, I'm going to slide off. But if he was, if he went to just like getting worried that I'm up there, it's like ah, and wanted to start going faster and faster, but I would have just swung right off again. But I felt him, and he kind of just was like, oh, I need to move my feet a little bit. So I went along with him. Um, so that's accepting the human, getting to where you can get up on him. He'll stand there, be quiet, and you can get on, throw your leg over there, sit there for a bit, and then come off. So um, we're going to go through some accepting the, the saddle. Instead of using the saddle, what I'm going to do is just use the bareback pad with him, uh, showing you that's another option. So you don't have to start with the saddle. You can use a bareback pad. Um, you can use an English saddle, and all of that's good. And I've got it sitting over here on the barrels. So I'm going to take him over and introduce that to him. Let him smell it. Let him check it out. See what he thinks of it. He should be smelling the other horses on it. That's pretty good. So now I'm just going to take the pad, fold the pad in half, let him smell it, and then go up to his shoulder and then to his wither and just start rubbing him with that. Get to where I can rub him all over on this side, and then go to the other side. Same thing. For that's no big deal. And then I'm just going to open the pad and start throwing it up and off, up and off, and start letting it slap him a little bit so he gets used to that movement, that noise. back to the other side, do the same thing on this side. So again, this is all about, or most all of it's about the rhythmic motion, getting him to be able to handle. So the accepting the human was getting him to be able to handle me in new places. He'd never had anybody on his back before, so that was a new place to experience me. And now he's getting to experience this pad, making noise, rubbing him, and he's doing pretty nicely with that. So now I'm going to grab the bareback pad, let him smell it. Throw the pad on and off. And then I'm going to move his feet and do it again. So I get in rhythm with this pad. I'm going to go three times with the pad, and then, you know, I've just got the bareback pad, which is essentially the same as the pad, but if it was the saddle, it'd be the same 
Same thing. I'd go three times with the pad and then the saddle. Then I'm going to take down the girth, check to see if the girth is the right length. And then come around and I'm going to girth them up the first time by keeping my feet pointing backwards using the back of my left hand reaching under his belly, grabbing the girth, picking it up, picking the cinch through, pulling it, keeping it up, don't let it fall, and bump, and then bring it back up where it bumps him on his belly. And then I'm going to tighten the girth up. And you want to have it snug, especially if it's a saddle, because you may not get to it again if you need to move them around. And now I'm going to ask him to move around. So I'm going to use the three communication games to send him out and around me. Start working on the beginning pieces of lunging. And what I want is for him to start following a feel, following my intent, and I'm looking for forward. If I don't have forward with him, it's really hard for me to go do much of anything. So he's just kind of wallering around here. Can I... Disengage that hind end. You know, there, he just was like, no, don't touch me. But it was because he wasn't really paying attention to me. He's just kind of off somewhere else. Yeah. So can I get him to... Start stepping up and walking around. Again, I'm looking for forward here. And he has to get comfortable wearing the pad. I don't want him dragging on me or leaning on me. walking around with them. Now a lot of times when I first saddle up I'll let, let them go and just let them wear the saddle in the arena. A lot of times I'll let them wear it while I'm riding another horse because um, then I can just kind of watch them but then they can experience the saddle all on their own in the pack. But not always so sometimes you you want to be able to work them online. So I'm just throwing a little rhythm down the line saying, can you follow my intent? My intent is, is I want you to back up. Don't push through me. And then I, my tools back up my intent. Now I'm going to ask him to Step off this direction. So I ask the front to go out first. Then he wants to go over by his buddy. He's kind of like I'll drag drag off, try to drag me off, or he wants to turn in on me. And he has to find, he's got some boundaries, he he's, has to start living within those boundaries. There you go. So again, it's 
getting that forward. speeds up a little bit and that's okay. I actually give them more rope then. The other big thing I don't want is for him to lean on me. I want him from the day one when I offer something I want a response. Doesn't always have to be the right response but he's at least trying to figure it out. This is better. He checks in with me and that's good. Yeah. Now he's kind of left me there. Saying, hey, I'm talking to the hind in here. Don't leave me. Thank you. Good boy. And then I'm going to ask the front to come through the other direction. And head back down this way. And I'm going to leave him with that because, you know, this he's, we've done quite a bit, you know, time-wise. You know, he really hasn't worked that hard, but that's okay. I don't want to work him that hard. I just want him to be in a good frame of mind, to be relaxed, be happy about the things that we're working on. He didn't seem to be bothered with the pad at all, and that, that's really what I'm, I like that. I like to know that. So we're just going to keep progressing on with this, you know, go through the accepting the human again tomorrow for probably three or four more days, you know, accepting the pad, and then uh, I'll do accepting the saddle. And in a, in a while, I'll, I'll get to where I can get on and start riding him. But he's really young, so I don't do a whole lot. I mean, if I'm on him 10 or 15 minutes, that's about all. You know, just kind of slowly bringing him along, showing him some stuff. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions about anything I'm doing, down below this video, there should be a place for you to leave comments. I'd love to hear your comments back on this. Um, let me know, is this helpful or is this not much much use to you? I'd, I'd really like to, to hear what you have to say. Thanks for your time. We'll see you next time.